body of evidence across the country that cancer rates are rising among First Nation, Métis and Inuit people and cancer is becoming more and more of a concern to these communities. Uh, in Saskatchewan, we don't actually have any information around this. Like our cancer registry, which records or keeps track of cancers occurring in the province, does not collect information on um, like ethnic identity or things like that. So we actually have no way to get any solid data on, on the ways cancer is affecting our First Nation and Métis communities, um, which is problematic not only for under, better understanding of the rates and types of cancers, but developing targeted programming to improve health and then evaluating that programming really does rely upon that data. So the project was initially conceived um, with a strong surveillance base, so developing the capacity to, to get that data into our databases to be able to then uh, build programming and services from there. It is so important to, to hear and, and let the communities know that they're heard and actually work together collaboratively to address these things. Uh, what works in, in the non-First Nations community does not necessarily work. For First Nations communities and, and individuals. If the goal really is to make a difference for communities, you absolutely must work truly with the communities, not just going in and saying you have this idea or you want to you want to do this because from an epidemiologist perspective, if we had this data, we could provide such better service for you. Well, that may be true, whatever. That's neither here nor there. You have to meet the communities first and find out where they're at. So we need to learn about uh, the treatments, what radiation is, and what 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 a, what an individual has to go through, and also the support of families. We need to uh, look at uh, supporting the families. We need to help them, educate them about the disease itself, what it is, what the client, what their family members are going through, and what they can support them in. But it's, it's um, probably a lot more um, communication and, and so um, physicians and, and other uh, health professionals have, have a much better understanding of how to approach First Nations. You know, for myself as a community leader, you know, it's important that, that we provide those opportunities for our youth and part of our vision to be, you know, a unified, proud, prosperous, sovereign nation. Part of prosperity, um, you know, and prosperity could mean health as well, you know, and being prosperous in our, in, in our well-being, and uh, it was an opportunity for me, I thought that, you know, those are the tools that we need to provide our youth, is to become strong, healthy, uh, addiction-free um, uh, young people, you know, they are our leaders, our future leaders, and we need to look after them. We can give youth the tools to make a change in their lifestyle for better. Everything comes to a standstill, which is negative. Negative thinking, uh, negative process of eating, negative process of not being shy, not tell where I'm hurting. If some kids are very progressive, the other ones are going to follow them along. So it's like from one light, we can light a million lights. We're trying to make the kids more aware of, of the disease of cancer. We shouldn't be uh, afraid of it. There's, uh, we have more hope now today than we did a long time ago. Like in my, my grandparents and them, they, they pretty well suffered through it if they had it. Eh? Like my grandparents had it and they died from it. Eh? But today, you know, you catch it early, you, you got a chance just to make it more aware that uh, there's hope like in the buffalo, there's hope in the buffalo, the coming back of the buffalo. We asked them, what do you want to title that painting? And there was a simultaneous response for a few kids, hope. And hope is a beautiful word. Either you deal with crisis, if you can instill hope, you can change the pathway of that process. If you instill hope, you can fight any illness to some extent. I 
want to do as much as I can till this program is over. And if it's like ever offered again, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't even hesitate because it, it's, it's rewarding when you, you know, you care for your people, you care for the Métis and, you know, like the First Nation people. When I got into this project, and uh, they hired me to do the interviews with the clients. I learned a whole lot more. And uh, so when someone else is diagnosed, right, right away I'm concerned, you know, to be there for them. That, that is my role, I guess, as an elder. Doing the community-based work has been the absolute best part of this. And as I said, as an epidemiologist, I wouldn't have expected that I would be the type of person who would find, you know, doing the community engagement work um, so rewarding but it's I've enjoyed it so much it's just been so eye-opening and coming up to the communities and and really getting to listen and hear the stories and under try to understand because as a person from you know from the major center you can't really understand what it is like to be up here and uh, have to travel for medical care and the access issues and things but it's just been such a privilege to hear all that firsthand and to get to spend time with these people and kind of build some friendships even and uh, it's been really rewarding that I feel really privileged to have been able to do that just I, I, I just want to thank the you know uh, cancer agency for picking our community as part of this project. I think it was an awesome experience. It shows that um, when you do partner with small northern communities, you are going to see success. As a cancer survivor, currently in my third year of remission, I know firsthand the feelings of being lost within your own mind, body and soul. With such a program as the Cancer Surveillance, we as a team can bring awareness, early detection, holistic healing, proper diet and exercise to individuals dealing with cancer within participating communities. You know, it, the, the awareness that I, I have about cancer and cancer prevention is just, you know, opened up my eyes for me to be there for someone if they need me. The work and the relationships will continue, I feel quite confident. I mean, not only through other initiatives happening through the agency with Northern Health and the Northern Health Strategy and things we're trying to do um, to stay engaged, but I also, I feel the momentum in the communities. I hope, I'm hopeful that, you know, we're kind of at the point where a lot of this will continue. It may not look exactly the way it's looked to this point, but, but in the bigger picture, that work will continue. Yeah, we just have to continue, to try and continue doing something. We can't stop here and, and be, go back to where we were. We have to keep going forward. Mamo tawi mawak siwat sin. Kena naskom na na nuskagi sikak. Iko hiksiwat sin imi yak matsuin. Ah kio gi kwete sa patsih taya kota. Imi osikaski. Tawit si hito yah ta sa gi hito yah. Taksiwat o tato yah. Iko sis na naskom ta kanuskagi sikak. Hey hey.